currently dying, and I would like to schedule a consultation. Sarah. Hi there. I'm sure you're familiar with the process. <laughs> when you know you're going to die, you can have yourself cloned. You have very clean skin. I like your shirt. This is my life. She's not going to take it from me. What are my chances? Zero. Nothing is ever absolutely certain, though this most certainly is. I really value your friendship. I'll miss that when you die. Speaking of which, any updates? Hey. Oh, hey. nice background. Oh, thanks, Riley. Thanks for joining me today to of talk course. about school. Man, love this film. Congratulations. What a great sci-fi. I just, I mean, I, I a lot of been pitches about this. I say Parent Trap meets Running Man because I'm Gen X, you know. So. I will fully take that. I, I my, my dad showed me uh, 70s sci-fi films when I was a kid. And and so the uh, the Running Man, I'm I'm all for that. Oh, like, I know it's not good. 70s, but still, like, I, yeah, I was yeah. in that. Story. Everyone's comparing it to Hunger Games. I'm like, nah, it's Running Man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm all for it. I mean, slightly different delivery of dialogue. But other than that, we're, we're in the same boat. Oh, man, excellent job. Uh, well, you know, Telling Sarah she's terminal, so cold and calculated. Uh, it, I love your deadpan humor in this movie. You know, I love because it, it, there's seriousness to it, but also I found myself laughing through the whole film. So I hope I was right because I, I love how you mix, you infuse science fiction and uh, such a serious topic with with humor. I thought it really worked. I really appreciate that. The hardest part for me is that the movie kind of in the beginning needs to set up this world of uh, Sarah kind of as her as a loner as a person who's disconnected or maybe unmotivated. And by design, that, that area tends to have not as much dialogue, as, and that's the area that I tend to find the most humor in and fun for me to write. Uh, and then the terminal scene that you're talking about, you definitely don't want to take too much away from the gravity of the situation, but also you're still a comedy. So the balance of that is kind of tricky, and I'm very, very happy with how it turned out. But, uh, but yeah, the, the laughter, once it really kicks in, I think giving permission to the audience to, to accept this as a comedy, uh, it, it, it was like, that's where I wanted to be as soon as possible. I think uh, also use of an accent kind of lessens the blow. There's, there was something that was just, I don't want to say I had no emotion in it, but it just sounded almost like a computer, very robotic, you know, yeah. when they would deliver the dialogue. Yeah, it's definitely uh, treating everything with an emotional disconnect. And I think that that's just by the nature of trying to ensure that we exist in this world where something like this could happen. Like, I think the way that people talk to each other and the way that they are so matter of fact and present information to other people and the way they take it in and assess it, that's the society that also would create this dual right. to the too. So I think they all inform each other. Right. I always thought that when... Um the the plot that when she she clones herself right she was thinking of her mother but obviously she wasn't you know she was being selfish and then she has to fight for the death because the clone wants to live yeah and i thought no nah, i didn't i always I think of roger ebert review the movie they made but i thought you were gonna do like a murder mystery because they have identical dna so it's like i thought there was gonna be a murder plot you know that you could she could yeah. knock off her clone and you're like, what are you talking about? You know, it's like, who's going to care, right? So yeah. there's so many different ways you go with this movie. So I was really impressed on the way you did it with a fight to the death. Thank you. And I, I, I yeah, the, there are a lot of paths that you could go down with uh, this film. Once I realized that there was going to be the duel to the death element of it, um, I think it kind of informed the entire structure of the film for me. And I knew from that point on what the beginning, middle, and end of Duel would be. Uh, there have been many films and shows recently that have kind of embraced the doppelganger clone uh like how do you how do you like figure out who you are by interacting with another version of you and i like that my movie feels very much like my movie <laughs> it's, it's, your, like, it's your own we went down a specific path and it's one that i'm very proud of did you have tricks for karen to kind of play against herself when she was doing those dual scenes um, I mean, the, the trickiest thing was us just embracing the subtleties uh, in the differences of the characters. So not being so on the nose with one being just super loud and aggressive and like her hair is completely different or whatever it is. We really wanted to make sure that they, at the end of the day, are the same person. It's just that they've started to branch off and become their own people. And that presents itself in something as simple as how do they do their makeup? How do they dress? How do they uh what, what kind of food they like and and so that those little things uh are in the movie are always 
what was exciting to me, like these life simple annoyances or life simple differences. Well, you know, none of that helps though at the end, being, without giving any spoilers away, trying to figure out, it's very ambiguous and the ending there, but I was looking for the context and you know, I was looking for little little hints of like who is who, but you really left it open. So thanks for frustrating me at the end. It's <laughs> funny because I, I actually look at it as, as pretty like certain who it is. So, you think so? I, I think that there's, I there's enough clues there, I feel like, to say that there's not really, like, I think the movie tells you, but I like that some people have gotten that from it. And hopefully then on a second watch, they might go, oh, I see what he means. Like, yeah, I, I think I, that I, a good I watched the way. last 15 minutes, like three times, trying to- Did you? Know, you? Trying, Look, like, with it, like, to... I mean, we're getting the spoiler territory, but like not knowing yeah. how to drive a car and everything, like, yeah. Little things, little things. Yeah. But I'll, I'll do it again, just for you. Okay, cool. Oh, just for me. Thank you. <laughs> and I love Aaron Paul. He's a dual trainer. I love the attitude that he's cheap. I thought that was really funny. <laughs> I love that character, and I love the earnestness of which uh, in which Aaron plays that character. And it's something that maybe wouldn't have been on the page, uh, like I thought of that way for me. But once Aaron got involved, uh, I just I knew that we had to kind of embrace the the charm and and caring of, of Trent that wasn't maybe there uh, in, initially. And I think that it benefited the character immensely. And it's, it, I just, I love the way that he plays Trent. Now, I was kind of uh, trying to figure out where we were in England or we were in America, because like sometimes you had regular accents and then you had, so I, I thought that, and then I saw Brighton towards the end, I saw a street sign. So there was different, I was trying to determine exactly where we were for the movie. Yeah, the idea was that we are somewhere in a alternate version of the United States, probably. And it's just like another dimension. Uh, one of the things that really informed that too, because it was already the way that I had intended it, but when we knew that we were going to start shooting in Finland as opposed to the United States or Canada, once COVID uh, happened, we shot, we started prepping in August of 2020 uh, in Tampere, Finland. And that feels like the Pacific Northwest in terms of architecture, or sorry, in terms of the, the layout and the, the geography, but it's architecture so different. The accents of the people that we were working with were different. And it really just informed this world. This world is just its own thing. And for all intents and purposes, it's a alternate reality United States. It felt like that. It really did. Good, good, good. Well, congratulations, Raleigh. I love the film. I uh, wish you the best of luck with it. Can you do me a favor, though? Send me a link for that pool orgy at the haunted house. I really want to watch that. Oh, man, that was the <laughs> that was the funnest thing to just sit for 20 minutes to try to figure out what the title of this thing was going to be and why it would fit in the context of Duel. So I'm glad that you were that excited to see it. We'll figure <laughs> out a special feature for the DVD at some point. It was funny. It was great. Thank Thank, you. Thanks, man. Take care. Yeah, you too. Thanks. Thanks.